Hi everyone and welcome to day four of the Get Active Keep Well course. Uh, the course is being delivered under the Welcome Active initiative. So every Tuesday and Thursday we present a new topic in the six-part series which aims to provide some simple practical tips and resources to help you in getting active and keeping well for 2021 and beyond. Today's focus is on the topic of fitness for all and we're delighted to be joined by Mark McManus from Leisure World in Cork. Mark has worked in the sports science, fitness and academics fields for over 20 years and is also involved in developing numerous community um, physical activity programs with ourselves here in the Cork Sports Partnership and also with Cork Kerry Community Healthcare. So we're really excited for Mark to join us tonight to offer his insights and his knowledge around the topic of improving fitness for all. And with that, I'll hand you over to Mark to get us started. Hi Owen, thanks very much. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to move through the talk tonight quite quickly at the beginning um, because I want to leave a little bit of time at the end, towards the end, if I can. Um, I would ask everybody as well if they wouldn't mind, um, if they can, put a question into the chat box if they wish at any point during the talk tonight. And I want to beat the record. So there's only been, you know, I want to try to get more than 15 questions that would beat the record from all the talks. So please, please ask a question. So if you have a question in your head before you logged on tonight saying, I would like to find th this information out tonight, then please just throw that question in. I won't call out your name, so it will be anonymous and you can send the questions directly to me if you wish as well. So I'd say that's from the get go. So as Owen um, mentioned, my name is Mark McManus. Uh, I'm currently a manager in Leisure World, but um, as he said, I'm getting a bit older and I've been doing this for about 20 odd years now. And I've learned an awful lot through experience from meeting people uh, from all over Cork and all walks of life and all areas of the world. I've learned a lot more about how to get more active and the challenges that we face to be more active and the questions that people typically have. So I'm going to try to cover off some of those most common um questions and queries people have. When you're not a qualified fitness instructor, you're not meant to know all of these uh, things and all this information. So it's very hard sometimes to, to uh, find the information. And um, I find it hard myself, even preparing for tonight's talk, looking through the internet, looking for information. I found it difficult and I knew what I was looking for. So it, I can understand how difficult it is for people who are trying to get started or trying to find good information, which is actually relevant and appropriate for you as well. So before I go any further, I've asked um, Owen to do a little uh, questionnaire for me. Um, and if you wouldn't mind just reading the two questions that we have there. The first one, you're probably wondering why I'm asking that question, but you will understand before the end of the talk. Which question one is, do you have or have you had a dog? It doesn't have to be a dog. It could be any pet, really, you know, something you had to look after and take care of. Um, and then the second question is really to help me tailor the talk tonight towards the people who have tuned in. OK, so 50% dog lovers. And we have a, a nice even split there between adult and uh, older adult. Um, so that's, that's fantastic. So I'll make sure that I, I comment as much as I can in, in both those areas. Um, no one selected the children. Um, I'll mention it in passing, but people can ask questions specifically if they, they want to. So that's, that's great. Thanks for doing that, everyone. So I'd like to move on to the next slide. And as part of an introduction, I want to talk about the pillars of physical health. There's three pillars of physical health, and this has been presented in many different ways. Um, and the three pillars is physical activity, nutrition, and sleep. And if we take any one of those pillars away, as a human being, we won't survive very long. We all understand that if we're not allowed to sleep for any period of time, it has serious implications on our health, you know, <laughs> leading to death. Ultimately, nutrition is the same. If we don't keep ourselves fed and watered, we will you know, die uh, quite quickly as well. And physical activity, while well, it's a, a, a longer um, time, a, a longer effect, it is still an essential pillar of health. So these three things we need to monitor and we need to try to optimize as much as we can um, 
to ensure to optimise our, our best health. If any of those areas, as we all know, fall down, then our health generally suffers from it. So physical activity is one of those pillars, and that's what we're here to talk about tonight. I, I do want to mention nutrition and sleep just in passing at the start, because it's important, because physical activity, while it's another pillar, is also impacted. If your nutrition isn't as it should be, that's going to impact on your ability to do physical activity. And if your sleep isn't up to scratch either, that's going to impact on your ability and your energy levels wanting to do physical activity. So they're all very important and they all work hand in hand. And if one falls down, it does affect the other ones. So it's very important. But funnily enough, if I was to say to people, if you to go without sleep or go without food, you would say to me straight away, oh, I would find it very hard to be physically active. Yet if I said, if you do no physical activity, how does that affect your nutrition and how does that affect your sleep? You'd probably not think it affects it too much. So we, we have it round uh, backwards. Sometimes when we, we prioritise what's important. Um, so good habits, and it's about behaviour, isn't it? It's about uh, getting into the routine of exercising. It's getting into the routine of eating healthily. And it's getting into the routine of getting good quality sleep. And it's all about routine. And I know that Bridget and a couple of the other speakers in the last few days, if you've tuned in to any of the other talks from the Sports Partnership, have already addressed some of these other areas. Um, but it is all about habits. I'll give you an example. This is a food pyramid. Look how complex it looks. It's scary looking to me and it's very complex. And, and, that's, and there's a challenge in people understanding how this is meant to work, okay? And it's, and it's difficult. Um, but there is science out there. We know what we should be eating more of and we should know what we should be eating less of. We also know what kind of portion sizes we should be eating. And if we address those things, that will keep our nutrition on a good track. So going back again to the three pillars of physical health, I've mentioned the nutrition. It's important to stay on top of that. And um, I'm just going to look at sleep quickly. I did see someone ask the question the other day, asking um, you know, how to improve um, sleep. Uh, and there's, there's kind of, again, well-known examples of what you can do to improve what they call sleep hygiene sometimes, you know. Um, and there's some examples there. Now, don't worry about writing anything down from these slides. I'm going to be going through them very quickly. Uh, but the idea is that you'll get a copy of these slides afterwards. They'll be emailed out to you and you'll be able to take your time looking through them. So healthy sleep is very important. And again, why I'm highlighting this is because it's extremely important that your sleep and your nutrition is supporting your physical activity. Okay, now I'm moving on to physical activity and fitness. And again, I find that it's hard for everyone to understand what we talk about sometimes because we use terms like physical activity, we, we use terms like fitness, and we're not quite sure Sometimes we're talking about fitness or we're talking about physical activity. So I'm using this diagram here. It's from the Public Health England. Uh, and they've broken down physical activity into different areas. Active living is being active, uh, out and about, uh, everyday living. Active travel is walking and cycling to your work or to the shops um, or to school or education or anything like that. Active recreation, walking a dog. We did a survey earlier on. We only had 50-50. Uh, dog lovers here and um, so active recreation and um, getting out and about just to spend some time out in the fresh air and then active sport and I think today's what I'm talking about is active sport and not sport in the terms of soccer, GA, rugby, hockey, hockey athletics it's not active sport it's, it's being active it's actually exercising for the purpose of improving your fitness okay so when I talk about fitness I'm talking about you deciding that you're getting dressed and you're getting out the house for a particular purpose of improving your fitness, okay? There's a lot being talked about at the moment about mental health, mental well-being, getting out in the fresh air, going for a walk, going for a cycle. That's fantastic. And that's being physically active. And being physically active regularly is actually the easiest and the most effective way of you improving your health, okay? But I'm going to focus, I'm taking it that people who have checked in tonight are interested in improving their fitness, 
So that's slightly different. Not talking about wanting to run a marathon, not wanting to you know take part in a competitive sport, not talking about uh, training really, really hard, but just improving fitness. Because as as um, this slide shows here, active living, active travel, active recreation is all great for your general health. But if you actually want to improve your fitness level, you need to do a little bit more than just the active living, active travel, and active recreation. So this is a little bit of information just to tell you what's happening in Ireland around uh, us all at the moment. And Sport Ireland do a survey every year, and this is the one from 2019, so it's just two years ago. And what it shows is that the highest and most popular activity that everybody does in Ireland is personal exercise. So if you're sitting there wondering, am I strange? Am I different wanting to do something for myself? Am I, is it strange for me to lie on the living room floor and do try and do a sit up or try to do a stretching exercise or to go out and walk up and down the hill 10 times? No, you're not strange because the most popular activity in Ireland is personal exercise. So it's entirely normal to want to improve your fitness and then do something about that. Surprisingly, the second most popular activity is swimming. 9% of active people swim. So swimming, you would never think of, but it's one of the most, it's the second most popular type of exercise and form of exercise in Ireland. And, and it's not just Ireland, it's the UK and other countries as well. So swimming is extremely popular. Now, some people may not be able to swim, some people may be scared of water and so on, but for people that can, swimming is a fantastic exercise because you can do it for the light full lifespan. From young to old, you can swim and you don't need equipment except access to water, whether it's in a swimming pool or outdoors in a river or a sea. Obviously, safety issues there. Running comes in at 7%. So running is actually the third most popular sport when you... And for me, that surprises me because you always think of everyone's out running around, but actually it's not. It's personal exercise and swimming at the top two, then you have running, then you have cycling. And again, that's quite surprising. It's, I'm surprised both ways, surprised it's fourth, but I'm also surprised it's so much more popular. When you look at what's the next most popular, 3% of uh, the population are taking part in soccer, yoga, and dancing. Can you imagine just as many people take part in dancing as take part in soccer? Isn't that fantastic? Because what that means is that, but it doesn't get the same publicity. And all we hear about is sports, sports, sports. So there is lots happening and there's lots of people around the country taking part in exercise uh, regularly and you can join them. And maybe you, everyone who, who's on this call already are already one of those people who are taking part in all those. So um, I'm really showing you this to kind of give you confidence and to say to you, keep doing what you're doing. And if you're not doing it, you know, start doing it with confidence that there's lots of other people in the same boat as yourself. Uh, I'll skip on to the next slide as well. And again, I just wanted to highlight on this, this is the same study. 47% uh, are uh, regularly involved socially in sport. And again, what I wanted to highlight there was the, the highest, most popular sport here that um, is gym membership at 14%. So the most popular sporting activity in the country is going to the gym. Now, imagine that, you know. Uh, and unfortunately, the fitness industry has a kind of bad reputation, you know, and, and it's given it itself by the images and the pictures of all these very fit young male and female pictures that they use, etc. But I'll tell you now, certainly in Leisure World, in most gyms that I know around the place, there's young people, there's older people, there's people who are less fit, there's people who are more fit. The gym is now a place which is full of all fitness levels and all body types, and it's welcoming to everybody. So I would encourage you, if you've never considered maybe going to the local gym or checking it out, please do. And it's not a sales pitch. It genuinely is just letting you know that it's very popular now and lots of people are accessing it. And you may be sitting there thinking it's not for you, but... I think it's maybe something you should maybe consider. Now, the quality of this, these images aren't great, but it's from the same report again, and there's the list of activities by popularity. Personal exercise, swimming, running, cycling, soccer, yoga, dancing, golf, Gaelic football, weights, Pilates, and hurling camogie. 
And my goodness, look at the headlines that GAA gets and look how far down the popularity it is in terms of people taking part. Eh? So um, that's that's nice to see, or maybe it's, it's surprising to see for some of you. And underneath, it's not very clear, but can I just read them out to you? It's the list of why people take part in sports. So all the people that took part in the personal exercise and all the other things, this, the report asked them, why do you do it? Why do you do it? And the most popular one that came out was to improve my health and fitness. And I'm guessing that everyone logged on here tonight, came on here because it was advertised as fitness for all, improving your fitness. So there you go. You're the same as everybody else that takes part in activity. You want to improve your health and fitness. The second one, and I think this is hugely important, and I would encourage you all to keep this at the front of your mind now, to have fun. Fitness should be fun. Bridget was talking last week on her talk, I don't know if you listened to it, and she said there's this, a mentality, and it's not just in Ireland, but it's a mentality in people that think if they want to get fitter, it should be hard. If they want to improve their fitness and tone up or do whatever it is they want to do, it, it will have to be hard and challenging and painful. Now, I blame people like uh, Rocky, you know, who in the movie, you know, they, they have to run for miles and climb stairs and lift heavy things and everything else to get stronger and, it's, and, and get fitter. It should be fun. And the, the interesting thing is there was a number two reason people said they do it. They do it to have fun. And I would really encourage you there tonight to really put fun to the top of your list when you're trying to work out what it is that you want to do to stay active and get improve your fitness. It needs to be fun because you won't keep doing it if it's not fun. The next one down was to spend time with family and friends. It's a great social opportunity to meet with people, have a chat when you're out for a walk, for your workout or anything else, or even meet them before and after. If you're working, exercising, and you can't talk because you're exercising at a high level of uh, intensity, then you can chat before and after. To relax, a lot of people said they do it to relax. Now, next one says to control my weight. So that's actually quite far down. And again, to think, to listen to the media and read the papers and the magazines, you would think that would be up near the top, but it's not. People don't do exercise to control their weight. It's a, it's a, it's a bonus, it's a side effect, but the reason why people keep doing it is to have fun and improve their, their health and fitness first. Then the next last two or three, to improve my athletic skills, to improve how, how I look, and to compete with others. So hopefully that will just give you uh, an idea of why the majority of people take part in exercise and you'll recognize yourself in there. And if maybe if you're down towards the bottom, maybe have a, a rethink about why you're wanting to do the fitness or improve your fitness. Maybe it should be more about improving your health and fitness and about having fun and spending time with people rather than maybe some of the other ones that are down the line. So fitness for all, why should we exercise? People know this. I'm not going to spend much time on this. Sleep better, makes you feel healthier, uh, improves your thinking. My body will get leaner. Well, that's very tough, that one. It gives me more energy. That comes easily. And uh, muscles and bones get stronger. Yes, and that's so important for older adults. Muscles and bones, over the age of 45, muscles and bones start to naturally weaken. So we need to try to keep them strong, to maintain their strength. And it's from the age of 45 onwards. That's me, you know. So it's not when you get to 50 and 60 and 70. You need to start when you're 45 um, and maintain that muscle mass and maintain that bone strength. It helps people to relax. It relieves stress. And the heart becomes more efficient as well. And so this is just saying the same thing. Uh, the main benefits you get from regular physical activity. But I'm not here to convince you the benefits of regular physical activity, really. I'm here to try to help you um, understand how to be uh, more active. This is one for children and teenagers, but as people at the start of the uh, talk indicated, they weren't too interested in this area. Um, I will just mention it quickly, is that it's surprising how quickly the improvements are felt. And there's actually more studies, more information on children because they're actually easier to measure because they get them in the schools and they can track all their data through the schools, okay? But the same impact 
on their fitness levels will happen to adults and in some cases will happen quicker. So you can see the kids that did 40 or 60 minutes of exercise three or four times a week improved their aerobic fitness by 10% in just eight to 12 weeks. Two or three sessions of resistance training improved their muscle strength. 15 minutes of exercise improved their academic performance. So the brain was working better, a better oxygen supply to the brain. And that helps us all, especially again, as we're getting older, that exercise and that extra blood flow to the brain helps keep us, um, our brain active and um, working well. The cardio, doing cardio exercise, which is aerobic exercise, which is walking and, and moving, um, that boosts confidence, it reduces stress and it reduces anxiety. Again, it applies to the kids, but it applies to all of us. And again, for some of us who are maybe under more stress or more anxiety, then it's even more beneficial. Um, bone density, exercise between ages of 11 and 18 increases bone density, particularly in the spine and the hip. And that's why it's very important for children to get that uh, resistance exercise uh, at that age, because you want really well-developed bones, um, which are going to last your lifetime. If you get under development at a younger age, then you know, there's that risk when you're getting older that they may deteriorate a little bit quicker. But also that shows the improvements that the bone density um, benefits from at a young age, but I can't overemphasize the benefits of the bone density at the older age. And I know that one of the other talks on older adults um, this week already covered that as well. So you can probably look back on the videos of those from Sports Partnership. Um, and the last, one there is 30 minutes on a treadmill boosted problem solving by up to 10%. And again, that's about in, increasing blood flow to the brain and, and, and it puts you in a positive mood and you can problem solve. And I know myself when I go out for a walk, um, not so much a jog these days, but a walk, a fast walk, I actually sort out a lot of the problems that are maybe bouncing around in my head. And I, and I can, funnily enough, come up with solutions and problem solving. So it's fantastic what exercise does but I'm not here to sell exercise because you guys are already looking to, to do it. But the question I always ask people, why don't we exercise more? And the answers we all know, right? Life gets in the way, doesn't do what we want it to do. We have a great plan planned, what we're going to do today, and then it all changes. So that's life. Uh, I stole one of the slides from one of the other talks um, that was given by the staff from the mental health talk, and they give us tips on how to manage life, focus on what we control, and acknowledge what's outside of our control, okay, and recognize that, okay. There's no point in being frustrated and certainly no point in using it as an excuse not to exercise. I'll put this one in because I think it's quite relevant today. Working from home, maybe trying to exercise in the home. I'm sure if you've got pets, uh, one of the reasons I was asking if you've got pets, I wonder if you're trying to exercise at home and the dog is, or cats is looking for extra attention, thinking you're on the floor to play with them when you're trying to get your exercise done. You might have children coming in you're trying to be healthy and they're sitting eating a cookie in front of you when you're trying to get your exercise and workout done. Um, you know, and kids jumping. So it's difficult to do your exercise indoors at home when kids and pets and even other people are around in the house. And I suppose physical activity and fitness has impacted. It's usually the first thing that gets dropped Okay, it, unfortunately, it's the first thing that gets dropped. If you've got a plan in your head and say, I'm going to go for a walk, I'm going to do my exercises, and then life comes along, then you say, well, am I going to deal with this and go on and get my exercise done? Or do you know what? It's not worth it. I'm just going to sit down. I'm just going to watch the TV. I'm going to sit and look at my phone, or I'm going to go do something else because, you know, it's not worth the hassle of going outside and whatever, right? but there's always a distraction. And unfortunately these days, there are so many distractions. Netflix, <laughs> all the social media, um, 
in general, the news, the news is a distraction these days, it's 24 seven, you can tune in it. So there's plenty of distractions. And outside of the current times we're in, there's plenty of other distractions as well. The work can get in the way for people. You might go to the cinema, you might go um, meet up with friends, you might go to the pub, you might do a hundred and other one other, you might do a hundred and one other things except exercise or work on your fitness. And it's about reprioritizing and keeping that fitness as a high priority. And this is just another funny picture showing this is the plan. We all go to bed saying, tomorrow morning, I'm going to get up, I'm going to put my clothes on, and I'm going to go out for my run. And then next thing, you put your clothes on, somebody phones, you talk to them on the phone for five minutes, you're on the couch, and next thing you're eating the old cookies. Or we get down in the house with well-meaning intention, and I'm going to be really disciplined, I want to do my yoga, and next thing, oh, do you know what? I'm kind of tired, and I'm just going to lie down, and you don't finish what you started. That's life. That's reality. No one's saying it's not. But look at this picture. How can we get from those pictures that we just looked at to this little puppy, to this little dog? Now, I asked everybody at the beginning of the talk, how many of you had pets? Okay, now it's 50-50, which is fair enough, but I'm sure anyone that doesn't have a pet understands what I'm getting at. If you've children, you'll know the same. You take a child to the swing park, they run off in that swing park. They're up the slide, they're on the swings, they're running around, having a look around. You take a kid to a river, they're trying to jump in the river, climb the tree, run around the woods. We've lost it somewhere along the lines. Where did, as adults, where did we stop being children? Where did we stop being like a dog? Okay, we should be looking forward, wagging our tails to get out the door, get some fresh air and run around the green and run around the park. Walking up the hills, exploring the woods, going to the swing park, going to the playground. Who said adults aren't allowed to play in the playground? There is no sign that I can see saying that we can't sit on the swing and swing and swing. All right? So don't please don't all go to the zip lines and fall off the zip lines and say Mark told me to go and play in the playground, okay? But where did we all lose that? You get what I'm saying? It's meant to be fun. It's meant to be social. Fitness is fun. So start making it fun and we'll look forward to fitness much more often. Yeah? So we are missing something, guys. We want to be like that little puppy, that dog, or like those children, if you can picture it in your head. So the dogs in the street, no. Can you believe this? We actually, there are the guide dogs, the protection uh, it's a society for the protection of animals give out guidelines to humans of how to care for their dogs. And we care for the dogs better than we care for ourselves. We give them lots of water to drink regularly. We feed them regularly. We make sure we don't feed them too much. We don't give them rubbish because we know it will make them sick. We make sure that they get to meet other dogs and we give them plenty of company and pet them and keep them company during the day. Um, we make sure that they have a nice safe space so they can go to sleep and rest at night and we leave them alone. You know, we, they, they walk around and they just enjoy themselves. Why are we not strutting around enjoying ourselves and wagging our tail when we see other people walking towards us? Hi, how are you doing in the street? What's going on? And they, just, they see something, they just jump over it. I know I'm being a wee bit daft, but you know, when you keep it simple like this, my goodness, it's just crazy. What are we doing to ourselves? You know, it's there in front of us. So we can follow the rules to the dogs. We'll be fine, guys. All right. So do we look after our dogs or pets better than ourselves? Hence why I was asking the question at the beginning. You know, we plan time for our dogs. Now, maybe you've got a, a pet or a dog. You can open the door and let it out. But most of the time, oh, I have to go walk the dog. And we have to make the time to go do it. And then we get to the park. And what do we do? We stand at the gate, and we let the dog off the lead, let the dog run around, and we stand still. You know, so the dog is getting his exercise, and we're not. Now, that's not the case for everybody, and I'm sorry for generalizing, um, but I'm just giving examples um, to make us think, and what more could we do, and what, how can we better use that time with that dog? I tell you something, if you start running along the side of the path, or walking alongside of the path of the dog, it's wagging its tail and jumping all over you. If you go with your kids to the park and you walk with the kids and you run with the kids and you, you kind of climb with the kids and you do things with the kids, if it's safe, 
then they're going to be happy as anything. That social bonding and dynamic, if you go with your friends, if you meet up with a friend who's a similar age to you, similar fitness level to you, and you just go for a walk, but why not take that strange path up through the woods if it's safe that you've never done before and go exploring? Why don't you go to the beach and go for that walk along the beach and everything else? I'm sure many of you do that already, but I'm just emphasizing it. Start thinking of it as if um, you want to have more fun. And Bridget, you just used this slide as well. To help you exercise regularly, emphasize the positive things. Always look at what's positive about it. You always feel great when you come back from doing something, don't you? Everybody here knows it. Getting out is the hardest thing. So emphasize the positive. Do what you enjoy. Again, if you enjoy walking, go walking. If you don't enjoy cycling, don't cycle. If you don't enjoy swimming, don't swim. If you do enjoy swimming, swim. Um, goal setting, building on your strengths. Do stuff you're already good at. Uh, and then build upon family and community strengths. And that is so, don't do it alone, guys. It's, it, we've, we've learned in the last year, it's so hard to be motivated and do things on your own. Even when we're out of this shortly, hopefully, don't do it on your own. Team up with your family and friends, neighbors, or if you don't have access to family, friends, and neighbors, access some of the programs that Sports Partnership are running. You are going to be meeting people who are in the same situation as you. Staying fit for the future, a group of older adults exercising together, all with the same, uh, they come from the same background, they've got the same culture, the same interests. You will meet lots of new friends there. Project Weight Loss for Weight Management, join up with that. You're going to meet other people um, of the same ideas and aspirations. Um, men's, uh, the Men's Shed and the Women's Shed and Men's Active Programs, Women's Active Programs, there's so many. Join in with them. This is me doing a sales pitch for Sports Partnership. But what is the goal in all of this, guys? What is the goal? The goal is when someone asks you, what do you do for fun? You go, I work out. I go and do my fitness workouts. All right. What, how much, how cool is that? And there's nothing stopping this from being you just now. And I know this might seem a bit kind of a young and daft. It's not. There is nothing cooler. And nothing will make you happier. And if someone said to you, how do you keep yourself so happy and energetic? Well, I, I exercise. Okay. It's, it's, we just need to look at it from a different angle. We've always looked at fitness as being something we have to do. You know, and something that doctors tell me to do, something that the media is telling me to do. It can't be about that. It has to be something you want to do. And it has to be something you enjoy. And it has to be fun. So getting to the main part of the talk tonight is what is fitness? Because everyone's saying, well, what is it I should do? And I'm going to let you into a secret. You might all be sitting there thinking tonight and saying, what is it? I just, is Mark going to tell me what is it I need to do every day and every week to improve my fitness? And you're all going to log off now because I'm not going to tell you because I can't. Every single one of you are different. Every single one of you are individual, okay? But I'm going to give you tips and tools that you can use to improve your existing fitness program if you have one, or hopefully give you some ideas of where to get the advice and help that you now need to improve your fitness program. Right, what is fitness? Okay, let's keep going. This is, um, this is the academic stuff now. I don't want you reading this. I don't want you writing it down because it just confuses you. Okay, and I want to keep fitness fun. I want to keep fitness simple. Okay, but some of you may want to know a bit more detail and may want to know a bit more information. So when we talk about fitness and components of fitness, I could show 10 slides with lots of detail. Okay, but generally speaking, we talk about endurance. We talk about stamina. We talk about strength, flexibility, power, speed, coordination, agility, balance and accuracy okay there are a lot of big words in order to develop each of those areas none of us have the time a full-time professional sports person has the time to develop all of those elements none of us do so what do we focus on what we normally do is we break it down into two separate lists of 
fitness components. One list on the left hand side is health related fitness components and that's what we're interested in. These are the things that are going to keep us healthy, okay, and help us live a long, healthy and happy life. All of these things on the left hand side will reduce the risk of illness and injury. The ones on the right hand side, they'll help you play sport. They'll help you improve your performance. So I'm not here tonight to talk to you about improving performance, okay? If I was talking to a GA team or a soccer team, I might be, okay? But I'm not. I'm here to talk about health-related fitness components. So we'll look at the ones on the left-hand side. And I've got a yellow arrow in the middle there, and it's bringing balance across because for older adults, 45 years and above, balance is important. Balance is important. If you trip over and you fall, because you're over 45, your bones and muscles are getting a bit weaker, unless you're doing your regular exercise to keep them strong. If your balance isn't good, you are more at risk of falling. If you're more at risk of falling, you're more at risk of hurting yourself. So balance is a really important health-related fitness component, but I'm not going to talk about balance tonight. That was spoken about the other night in the talk about older adults and um, fitness and staying fit for the future. So please, Get in touch with Sports Partnership and ask them for a copy of the video for the older adults and they can send it on to you if you want to know more about balance and risk of falling. So cardiovascular endurance, muscular endurance, muscular strength, flexibility and body composition. They are the ones that we're going to talk about tonight, guys. So let's move on. There we go. That's the most important ones in one list. Look at that big word, Cardi cardiorespiratory endurance. That's why they call it cardio, because it's much easier. None of us can say cardiorespiratory endurance, eh? Cardio, what does that mean? It means that we move around and our heart rate goes up. Cardio fitness. Muscular strength is about being able to lift something heavy. Flexibility and mobility, for me, is being able to bend over and tie my shoelaces and getting in and out of the bed. That's what flexibility and mobility is for me at this stage, or putting something in the top shelf or skating something out the bottom drawer. It's not about doing a cartwheel or backflip or anything else. It's about being flexible and mobile to be able to do everything I need to do every day. Muscular endurance. Muscular endurance is different from muscular strength. Muscular strength is lifting that heavy bag of shopping. Muscular endurance is being able to whisk a bowl you know, of bread dough and you know, keep doing something, being strong enough to keep doing something. The last one, body composition. Now that's kind of less relevant tonight because body composition is important for health, okay? And I'll mention that in a minute. A minute. But body composition changes, actually changes as a result of the sleep and the nutrition that we were talking about right at the beginning. They are big factors in body, body composition. And then of course, the other factor is also our regular physical activity and fitness, okay? But body composition does impact our health greatly. But so does muscular endurance, flexibility, muscular strength, and cardio. And I want to point out that out of those five things, if I was to ask everybody, what's the one thing about your fitness that affects your health? Most people would say to me the body composition, how heavy they are, how overweight they are. But just as important to your health, is your muscular endurance, your muscular strength, your mobility, and your cardio fitness, okay? So it's important to look after your overall body composition. We usually call it your body weight. You know, we talk about people being overweight, but you can be underweight as well, and that's not healthy either. So we need to be careful about that. And you can be too muscular as well. So if someone's on the call tonight and you're too muscular, that's not good for your health and your heart either. So body composition is important, but so is muscular endurance, flexibility, muscular strength, and cardio. So here's some ideas. These are the, I'm trying to keep it simple. The fancy cardiorespiratory exercises, cardiovascular endurance exercises, crisscross jump. I, I hate these posters, guys. Okay, I hate them. For adults, for kids, they're kind of okay. When was the last time any of you did crisscross jumps? I don't know when I did one. And to be honest, if I tried to do a crisscross jump, I'd be scared to trip myself up and fall over. So I love these diagrams and they throw them up there and say, do these cardio exercises. 
I'm not sure who can do these kind of exercises, you know, especially when they say that you can do it at home when you're working from home. Anyway, frog jumps. You probably don't know what a frog jump is, but it's touching the floor and jumping up high into the sky. Again, that's too difficult for most of us to do. Super ball bounce, boxer bounces, running, running on the spot. Running on the spot, I might march on the spot to walk on the spot as part of a group activity, but I don't think I would ever get up in the morning and say, I'm just going to run on the spot. That's going to be my cardio exercise for the day. There's always exceptions. I'm generalizing. If you want to get up in the morning and run on the spot, do it, you know? Jumping ropes, high knee marches, jumping jacks, scissor steps, mountain climbers. These are examples of cardio exercises. They're probably more suitable looking at it for younger people, okay? Let's face it, the typical cardio exercise that we're talking about for adults is walking. If you're able to walk and jog, I heard uh, Bridget said wog, which is a mixture between a walk and a jog, W-O-G, a wog, <laughs> I quite like that. So a wog, a walk or a jog, that's typically going to be what I think most adults are going to do for cardiovascular exercise. But there's lots of other ones. There's swimming, there's hill walking, there's cycling. If you go to the gym, you could do cross trainers, which are non-impact. You know, the, the, you can get them in the house as well, the air walkers and the cross trainers, and they're good because they're non-impact. So there are other ways of doing cardiovascular exercise, okay? Some of them in the gym or in the home and some outdoors, but obviously outdoors at the moment, walking and so on. That's your cardio exercise. I don't think I need to explain it much more because I think we're more all familiar with that. Let's talk about strength exercises. Strength exercises, this is number two on the list of five. Remember we had the five things. So number two is muscular strength exercises. This is maintaining strength to lift heavy things, okay? And as I said, as you get older, it's harder to lift heavy things once, yeah? So you can do that by doing exercises again. Look at this poster, tricep dips. Who can do tricep dips? Sit-ups, who can lie on the floor? Sure, we can't get back up from the line of the floor. So who's going to go and do sit-ups? Push-ups, very few of us can do push-ups. We might be able to do a modified one by putting our knees on the floor, but again, press-ups are really hard to do. Power kicks, I love whoever did this poster. Shoulder presses, right? Shoulder presses, yes, we can do them with water bottles. That's great, but that's muscular endurance. That's a lightweight many times. We're talking about strength here. So how do we keep strength, which means that we need to overcome a bigger weight, squat jumps, pull-ups. Again, if you go to the swing park, actually, Cork City Council, Cork County Council are doing a great job. They're installing these gyms, these outdoor gyms and fitness equipment in Ballincollin Regional Park. There's one in Tremor Valley Park. There's one down in Douglas and Rochestown there. They're around the place now and there's more of them going in, okay? The parks have these exercise stations. So we can start using these exercise stations outdoors if you want. But pull-ups, I can barely do a pull-up. So, and standing squats, standing squats, fair enough, we can do those. So muscular strength, this is the hardest thing for adults to do. Finding an exercise that you can do, which is a heavy weight that you can do safely and not hurt yourself. Unfortunately, guys, I'm going to have to say the safest and best way of doing these exercises, strength exercises, is in a gym. If you can buy some equipment to have at home, do that. If not, go to gym, it's supervised, it's safe, and you can do your strength exercises there. There may be one visit per week, that's all we're talking about, or else you can improvise and do something else. But doing your strength exercises with a suitable heavy weight, it doesn't need to be a killer weight or anything like that, but it needs to be heavy-ish. You need to do that, and, and you can't get around this strength um, maintenance or strength development any other way except lifting kind of heavy. But you need proper advice to make sure that you do it safely and you know what you're doing. Flexibility exercises. Again, this is another one that sit and reach, toe touches, butterflies where you sit down with your feet together and push your knees down towards the floor. Straddle stretches, you probably did them um, at some stage when you were younger in gymnastics or PE or something like that. Lunges, crikey, if you could do one lunge and get back out of it, you're already doing well. Calf stretches, calf stretches are probably the easiest one and we can all do that leaning against the wall and we can do a calf stretch. A trunk lift is very hard, lying on your front on the floor again, lifting up your shoulders, that's difficult. Hamstring stretches, quad stretches, arm rotations. I'm showing you these posters because I'm, I'm demonstrating that I understand how hard it is for you to find good information that you can actually do yourself and apply yourself. 
you'll see plenty of this stuff around the internet and in books and people giving advice, but actually you trying to do it is very difficult. And again, as I said a few minutes ago, I don't have an easy answer for you. These are the kind of exercises we need to be kind of doing. And the best way around doing them is to join in with a light, a very beginner's yoga class, or again, join a program that Sports Partnership are running, like the Staying Fit for the Future or Project Weight Loss, or coming to a community centre or a leisure centre that has a supervised session that you think you'll fit into. I will say one thing that the fitness industry is very, has been very poor up until now. Most of the services that they offer has been to the fit person. You know, the person who wants to come in and exercise and the younger person. But more and more community centres and leisure centres are putting on new programmes and classes for adults that are just getting started. So please, please check it out, okay? Um, but otherwise, if it doesn't suit you and you want to do it at home, this is the type of flexibility exercise you need to do. Now, you don't have to put your leg behind your head. You don't have to be, you know, overstretching and hurting yourself. Gentle stretching. And again, I could do a whole talk on flexibility and mobility exercises, guys. So I know I'm not giving you a program in how to improve this fitness. I'm highlighting that this is an area of your fitness that you should work on. And you should work on this once or twice a week. Not every day, once or twice a week. That's all. And it could be two or three exercises, not a lot. It could take 15 minutes. So then this comes back to muscular endurance. And to be honest, most of you all probably have good muscular endurance. Every day you're pushing doors, pulling doors, you're lifting things into the car, out of the car, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're doing things all day long, um, which is developing a very low level of strength that you can do again and again and again and again. So most people's muscular endurance is actually quite good, but their muscular strength, which is lifting the big heavy things every now and then is usually poor. So two different types of muscular work needed here, guys, you know, but the muscular endurance is probably, if you're out and about and doing stuff, it's probably good. If you're not out and about doing stuff and you are very sedentary and you're sitting down a lot, then you do need to do exercises in your fitness program to improve and maintain your muscular endurance. Okay, and the last thing, so the five things that we've spoken about there was cardio, muscular strength, flexibility, mobility, and muscular endurance. And the last thing is body composition, right? Body composition is about how your body is made up, okay? And through our life, our body composition changes. At different stages of our life, we have more muscle. At other stages, we have less muscle. Some stages, we have more fat. Other stages, we have less fat. And based on the amount of fat and muscle we have, that dictates how much water uh, and even your bone density um, is it all changes throughout your whole life, okay? So at any one time, you will have more fat or less fat, you'll have more muscle or less fat muscle. Just depends on where you're at in your life and how active you are. All I need to see about body composition is that there are healthy ranges that you should try to maintain the body composition in. You've heard about this. You've heard of BMI, body mass index. You've heard that you're meant to have a certain amount of body fat and a certain amount of uh, muscle in your body. If you go too far outside of those, if you have too much body fat or too little muscle, then that increases your health risk and makes you less healthy, okay? Um, so if your cardio fitness is very low, your health risk, your risk of uh, getting sick or illness increases if your cardio fitness is low. If your muscular strength, your muscular endurance is low, your risk of health issues increases. Um, and it's the same with body composition. If you have too much fat or too little muscle, primarily, then that's when your health will suffer. Okay, so your body composition is an important thing to keep on top of. How do I know how much to do? So you're sitting there going, well, how do I know how much to do? Should I go out for a 15 minute walk? Should I go for a 20 minute walk? Should I go for a 40 minute walk? Should I go for a cycle? Should, how many press ups should I do? How many sit ups should I do? You're asking the question, how do I know how much to do? You're asking the question, how do I know what to do? You know, am I meant to go for a walk? Am I meant to go for a run? Am I meant to go for a cycle? I don't know. 
how do I know how to do it? The guy on the, the top, Mark, has told me that I'm meant to do press-ups, but I don't know how to do it. Mark has told me that I need to do stretch my hamstrings, but I don't know how to do it. Um, and then the fear, the fear comes into your head and you say, well, what if I do it wrong? And like, you're right, genuine fear. What if I do it wrong? What if I go and I lift that heavy weight and I hurt myself? Uh, what if I try to do that hamstring stretch and I pull a muscle? What if I you know, go out for that half an hour wrong run and I get out of breath and I, and I can't breathe? You know, these are things that are understandable. What if I do it wrong? And what if I hurt myself or overdo it? Okay. And I'll, uh, I've got a nice wee funny picture here that I think we're all familiar with at some stage, you know, where you say, I'm going to get fit, and you're going to listen to my talk, and you're going to be motivated, and you're going to say, right, on Monday, I'm going to do my cardio, on Tuesday, I'm going to do my strength, on Wednesday, I'm going to do my mobility and flexibility, on Thursday, I'm going to do my strength and endurance, and on Friday, I'm not going to eat anything because I want to reduce my body fat. Don't do that. Um, but you, you go gung-ho into this new fitness regime, and then you can't walk for three days, you know? Um, and it's a horrible experience and you don't enjoy it. And the reason why that happens is because you don't have the answers to these questions. So here's a quick look at what information is out there. Like, so it's very hard for you to read and I don't want you to read the detail here, guys. All I'm showing you is this is an example of the HSE website, Healthy Ireland website, and the Get Ireland Active website. All of these websites tell you, or give an indication, I should say, what's the minimum you should be trying to do, okay? And the minimum at the moment, and many of you have heard this already, is that every adult should be trying to do at least 30 minutes of activity a day. And it doesn't have to be 30 minutes straight, it could be three, 10 minutes. What I'm going to say to you as a fitness trainer is that as much as possible, make sure that there's, there's a focus for those 10 minutes or for that 30 minutes. It's not just a case of going walking the dog. If we're talking about fitness here, there needs to be a purpose and you need to be thinking about what you're going to do. And um, so you can see they've actually got slightly different guidelines for children. Children should be doing, from the age of two to 18, should be doing a minimum of 60 minutes every day. Now, crikey, I know I have three kids and, it, and it, I'm stressed out. They're not doing their 60 minutes every day at the moment, you know, but sure, we can't do anything about it and I shouldn't be getting stressed out about it, so I'm a bad example, but it's natural, okay? But 60 minutes is what children should be doing every day, minimum to keep their healthy. If you want to improve your fitness, you need to be doing more than 60 minutes. If you're an adult, 30 minutes is the minimum to maintain you. If you're already healthy, and if you don't want to improve your fitness, if you want to improve your fitness, you need to be doing more than 30 minutes. You might be doing 45 minutes at the start. That's fine. Working your way up. If you can work your way up to doing 60 minutes, fantastic. If you can work your way up to doing 90 minutes, even better. They say 30 minutes a day, but if you can't do 30 minutes five days a week, because some days you just can't get time to do something, they say you can look at it for the whole week and can you get 150 minutes done in a week, okay? So don't get too hung up on this, guys, because if we're here talking about fitness, we're going to blow those numbers out the park, all right? If we're here to talk about doing exercise to improve your fitness level, 30 minutes is going to be blown out the park each day, no problems. Now, you may not be exercising at the moment, and you might have to start with five minutes on the first week. You might go to 10 minutes the second week. You might go to 15 minutes the third week. You might work your way up to 30 minutes, okay? I'm not saying you have to start at 30. But what I'm saying is, if you're serious about improving your fitness and getting more active, then the 30 minutes is the minimum you need to get to. And then after that, we can start thinking we're actually going to be improving our fitness and our health, guys. One thing that's actually missing, from the other guidelines that we were just looking at a second ago, was any guidance around those other four fitness components. So the guidelines at the moment only talk about cardio fitness as such, okay? They don't mention strength, endurance, muscular strength. They don't mention um, flexibility, mobility. They kind of do, but they don't prescribe it, okay? So what I'm saying to you is that twice a week, two days a week, you should try to incorporate some muscle strengthening and flexibility, mobility exercises, okay, guys? So for say five days a week, here you go, 
three days focusing on cardio, two days focusing on strength and mobility. Okay, five days a week, three days cardio, two days flexibility and mobility. No, if you could do five days cardio and five days flexibility, mobility, and, and strength, fantastic. There's no stopping you, okay? But really, if we're only just talking about starting, guys, let's do three days cardio. And if that's five minutes or 10 minutes, that's okay. The 30 minutes, brilliant. And then five minutes of strength work and five minutes of mobility. I'm not a crazy trainer. I'm not trying to turn you into Arnold Schwarzenegger or a ultra super, super athlete. But if we're wanting to improve fitness, we need to kind of keep working and going. Okay, guys? Now, here's some more information. Information overload, guys. I'm very sorry. I'm throwing loads at you, okay? Hopefully, you're ignoring half of it and just taking the stuff that you're interested in and you want yourself. What is strengthening and balancing exercises? So I just said, there's plenty of information out there at the moment. Walk 10,000, wear your Fitbit, walk 10,000 steps every day. There's a hundred, what is it? Walk, walk 5K a day for hundred days. Or there's loads of, loads and loads of initiatives out there for walking and cardio. So that's taken care of. The cardio is looked after. There's plenty of opportunity, lots of lovely parks and walks and everything to go, right? So let's focus on how do we do the strengthening and the balance activities? This is taken from the Public Health in England. It was only published again in response to COVID. And they're saying two days a week, go to the gym. It might not be for you. You might not have a gym nearby. Certainly you can't go at the moment because we're closed. But when we are open or if you've got stuff at home, do it. Do some yoga maybe. Yoga again, very beginner type sessions. Look for a community-based session if you're only just starting out. Get used to it, see if it's for you. If it's not for you, find something else. If it is for you, you can progress on to, to uh, other types of yoga and different things. But don't be scared of it. It's You see these videos of people bending backwards and legs and arms and everything everywhere. That's not what a yoga class looks like. Most of the time you're lying your back learning how to breathe properly. Carrying heavy shopping. If you go and do the shopping, you carry the bags in and out. Then that counts as one of your workouts, guys. Uh, ball games. Ball games could be bouncing a basketball. So it's not running around playing GA or playing soccer, bouncing a basketball, something like that. Racket sports, a bit of tennis, squash, can't do it indoors at the moment, badminton, um, hitting a ball off the side of the house or the wall or something like that. Aerobic circuit training, again, you have to go to a community class and so on. So balance activities. Um, and if anyone's watching Operation Transformation, you can see that one of the minimum fitness tests is standing on one leg. Standing on one leg for practice is a balance exercise. You will get better if you stand on one leg and you practice your balance. So if you're an older adult, over 45, then you should be practicing your balancing exercises. You can do it standing in the checkout line, waiting to get to the till. Now you might look a little bit silly. Don't lift your leg up high in the air. Just take the foot off the floor a little bit. Don't fall over, but just take off the foot off a little bit. Do it standing in the queue waiting for the bus. You know, there's plenty of places in the post office standing on one leg or lean the weight onto one leg and, and get your balance and move your balance from left to right, lean your balance forwards and back. Balance is really easy to work on and people won't even notice, but it will do you wonders. Okay, let's talk about what we talk about moderate. So people keep saying go for moderate exercise, 30 minutes. Okay, so if we're trying to do three sessions of 30 minutes a week here, what is moderate exercise? A brisk walk. Now, a brisk walk is not a stroll, okay? A brisk walk is almost like Rob Hefferman, but not quite, all right? Brisk walk means you're actually maybe using your arms and you're moving quite quickly, okay? So brisk walking, you can still talk, but you want to be moving along, okay? And you can do a mix of strolling and brisk walking, but there needs to be some urgency in your walk to get some fitness benefits. Nothing wrong with going for a stroll in a chat, and taking it easy, if you've already done your brisk walk, warm down with your stroll and chat. Swimming and water aerobics. I'll show you a picture in a minute about how much energy uh, you can burn in aqua aerobics, okay? And so if you've got a swimming pool nearby you when they reopen, do the aqua aerobics. If you live near the coast and you can safely go into the water in the shallow water, go into the shallow water. Cycling. Cycling, for some of us, it's getting... You know, the roads aren't safe, but now there's some parks you can cycle in, etc. But 
Cycling for me is still something you really need to get into. It's not something you can easily just jump and go and do. Um, I enjoy cycling myself, but I understand it's not practical for most people. Hiking, hiking is wonderful. If you're already doing the flat walking for half an hour or up to an hour, start hitting the hills. That means hills round about your, where you live, um, roads, don't avoid the hills. You'll get much more bang for your buck just by walking up a hill for five minutes would be the same as walking on a flat for half an hour. So if you're fit enough to walk for half an hour in a flat, start introducing some small slopes and hills and building up that fitness. Moderate fitness, gardening and pushing a lawnmower. I don't like it when I hear people say gardening is a moderate activity. They've obviously never had to dig up a hole or rake the leaves or do a little bit of light landscaping. It's not moderate, it's intense, okay? So moderate is pruning the flowers and so on. Dancing, again, my type of dancing in the disco, that's not moderate, that's usually fairly intense. Looks bad, but it's fairly intense. I'm usually sweating by the end of it. But if you're doing nice, easy dancing, then that is moderate um, intensity. Active recreation, again, that's just you know, kicking a ball around in a park. Doesn't apply to many adults, but why not? Let's have some fun. Why not go down with your friend and pass a ball and all the 12 year olds will be looking at these uh, 15, 6 year olds passing the ball back and forth to each other. Uh, housework and domestic chores. Again, I would argue that some of that's quite intense, so be careful. Moderate activity and intense activity. The difference between moderate and intense is intense, you're sweating, you're out of breath, and it's hard going. Moderate, you're not sweating. It's a bit, you can keep a conversation going, and it's you're not tired after it as much. Okay, and carrying and moving moderate loads. So that's what moderate activity um, is. And what is intensive? Intensive um, or vigorous or high intensity, jogging, running, walking and climbing briskly, quickly up a hill rather than just going up a hill, fast cycling, aerobics, fast swimming, competitive sports, kind of those. That really doesn't apply to most of us. Vigorous activity really isn't part of our weekly activity, guys, um, unless we're training for something or we've got a big goal. So I'm not focused on that. I'm really focusing on the moderate activities. But as I said, this doesn't help you because it's not specific or it's not individual to your needs. So I've just told you a whole lot of information, but you've now got to pick and try and decide what applies to you and what you're going to fit into your schedule next week to try to improve your fitness. So how do you start? Right, here's how you start. The best way is to get professional advice. Okay, talk to somebody like me. You book a session, you come in, you sit down with me, I talk to you, I find out about your history, your fitness level, any health issues, any injuries you've had, what you enjoy, what you don't enjoy, and I can give you loads of recommendations on what you could do each week to maintain your fitness and improve your fitness. And it will be something that you'll enjoy and it will be something that you'll be able to keep going and maintaining. There are thousands of people like me around. There are fitness instructors in every community center, leisure center around. And I was speaking to Claire and the guys in Sports Partnership. They were really going to try and get something put together for everybody on this call that you can access some kind of consultation. And it doesn't mean just because you come and talk to me and I work in Leisure World, we're the public leisure centers. We are interested in getting people active. We don't care if you came and talked to us and we give you advice and you spend all your fitness outside or at home exercising. And then come back to six weeks later, to get more advice, okay? We're totally open to that. And so are so many other fitness instructors. Unfortunately, because of social media and personal trainers, people feel that they can't go and talk to these people unless they're going to train to become something, you know, super fit. But that's actually not true. Most personal trainers are working with people who are not active, who are really struggling to know what to do. And um, so it's, it's just the image is, is, is wrong. But the best way to get your specific help and advice is to talk to a professional like you would do with anything else. You go to a dentist to get advice on your, your teeth. You go to a car mechanic to get advice in your car. You go to you know, the bike shop to get advice on your bike. You, know, you go to your doctor to get advice. Um, so you go to the butcher to get advice on how to cook the meat, things like that. Join a program like Court Sports Partnership, but there's other programs out there as well, not just Court Sports Partnership. There's programs being run by many other organizations 
uh, they might be local to you, join in with them because you know what, someone will be leading that program and they'll keep you right and they'll give you good advice. So that's the best way for you to do it. Talk with a friend. If you know somebody who's already doing what you'd love to do, they're more active, they're able to do it, talk to them. And they, I tell you, they've done the same journey as you have. They'll be delighted to help you out. But just be careful. Don't talk to somebody who's doing an Ironman and ask them for advice and you're just trying to get started because their training and their advice may not be what you need. So just be careful. But if you've got a friend or family member or someone you know, just ask them, can I have five minutes? Could you give me some advice? This is what I'm currently doing. This is what I'm thinking of doing. What do you think about it? No harm in that, but just double check the advice they give you. You know, um, Just be careful about that. And then the other thing is there's plenty of online apps and programs and they can be very useful for more experienced people because they give you lots of data, lots of information, and they're really good for you to build your own program, but you really need to kind of have a better and good understanding. So Bridget spoke about this last day and, I'm, and unless I try to turn you all into fitness instructors in the next five minutes, um, there's actually not much more I can do except to say to you that when you're designing your own fitness program, you design it by using frequency. How many times a week are you going to do this? How intense is it going to be? Is it going to be moderate or is it going to be high intensity? How long is it going to last for? Half an hour, 45 minutes or an hour? And then what type am I going to be running, walking, cycling, swimming? What is that I'm going to do? Okay, so you use the fit principle. Here's some examples here. If you jogged for 30 minutes, okay, you burn 300 calories. If you cycle for 30 minutes, you only burn 180 calories, but the benefit of cycling is you don't have any impact on the body. So if you've got knees or back problems or whatever, cycling might be more comfortable than jogging. Walking burns less calories, but again, it's less intense and it may be more simple for you. And rowing machines, they're good. They burn a lot of calories. They're hard to do, but higher intensity, but you burn a lot more calories and get a lot more exercise done in that 30 minutes. I want to point this out. Water-based activities. Look at aqua aerobics. In 60 minutes, you burn 800 calories. In 60 minutes, 800 calories. If you were to swim freestyle up and down the pool, because you're efficient through the water, you only burn 700 calories. So jumping around to music in the water burns more calories than racing up and down the pool. And if you're just in the pool, just swimming around, you're burning 400 calories, which is still, when you look at the previous slide, 400 calories is still much more than jogging for half an hour. Okay, so you're still getting Good exercise. How do you measure how hard you're working? I already gave a list of what was moderate and what was more intense. Read through this. You're going to get this email to you. You can decide how intense it is based on how you're feeling. How do you feel? Okay. And Bridget also spoke about this RPE scale. This is too much detail for me to go into tonight, but you measure how intense you're working by using scales like this so you can work out where you're at, okay? And then to summarize it all, here's, here's the five components of fitness that we spoke about, muscular endurance, muscular strength, cardio endurance, flexibility, and body composition. And there's your fit principle. So you've got to incorporate all of these five things into your frequency, your intensity, your time, and your type. That's you, you're now a qualified fitness instructor, guys. You know how to write a fitness program. Take these five components of fitness and then build it into your five days on frequency, intensity, time, and type. Just make sure it's not too hard. Okay, remember what I said. How do you go from here? The best thing is to get advice and help. You can try to do it yourself or you can go and jump in with other people who can help and support you. I'm going to finish off. Whatever you do, no matter how small it is, pat yourself in the back. You are fantastic. You're doing brilliant. You're all over it. You're excellent. Give yourself a thumbs up. If you're doing a workout with someone else and you're doing it with somebody else, say it to each other. You are awesome. You are great. But the last thing I'll leave you with is we should all live our lives like a dog.